So I've got some data here from XLBI, um, a challenge on LinkedIn. And this is results from the World Cup group stages. And you can see the columns that I've got here, but uh, we're going to be adding three custom columns to, to this table. And we're gonna do it in three different ways. Um, the last one of which is probably the most interesting, but I will, I will go quite quickly through the first two. So we're going to be calculating the points. That's the first column we'll add. And the points will be the, one, the value in the one column multiplied by three plus the value in the draw column. We are going to extract the goals four from the GF-GA uh, column. So the goals four is the first number before the hyphen. And we are going to calculate the difference between goals four and goal against. So that's the goal difference. So four minus three will be one, five minus one will be four, one minus seven will be negative six. So those are the three columns we are going to add. So this is the first method, and I've opened the advanced editor here and zoomed in a little bit so it's easier to see. And you can see that I'm using table.addColumn to add three columns. Now this function is really easy and I'm not going to go into detail because I think you can just do it through the UI. Um, and if you're interested in transform rows, then you'll probably way past no understanding table.addColumn. But just for those who maybe aren't, the first parameter is a table that you want to add a column to. So in this case, it's source, which is the query on the left at the top, in the top left corner of my screen. The second parameter is the column name. And the third parameter is the calculation to apply to each row to produce a new column. So in this case, it's for each row, multiply the one column by three and then add the draw column. And that calculates the points. The goals for is the next uh, column to add. But in this case, we're adding it to the previous step and we're calling it GF for goals four. And in this case, we're using text.beforeDelimiter. And what we do there is we pass in a the column name of GFGA, and that is a text value. And the second parameter is the dash. And so that becomes the delimiter. So we're saying we want the text before the dash. And we are wrapping text.before delimiter with number.from to convert the result into a number. And that becomes the new value in the GF column in a new table called add GF. The third step is the same process, but we're adding a new column to add GF. And we're, the new column is going to be called GD for goal difference. And on this one, for each row, we are going to subtract from the GF column, which we calculated previously, the value after the hyphen in the GFGA column. So in this case, it's the value after the hyphen. And that gives us the goal difference, which we put in the GD column. And that gives us the resulting table. So you can see that here. Points, GF, and GD. In this second method, I'm still using table.addColumn, but this time I've tried to abstract the calculation of the number.from, textbook.before, text.after, delimiter part. Because what I noticed about those is that we were using number.from in both, and we were using either text.before delimiter or text.after delimiter. Um, and so those were actually very simple, simple and similar calculations. And I thought to myself, um, if this were a more complex process and there were lots and lots of calculations to be done, it would be useful to have a simplified function that, um, that only just had a, sim a simple name and a couple of parameters. So what I've done here is created a, a function called split as number. And split as number takes a single parameter, which is the delimiter, and it returns a function. And the function that it returns is this function, and the function that it returns has two parameters, the first one being some text, the second one being a number called position. And the function that split as number returns, this one highlighted, returns a number. And it is doing the calculation that we saw in the previous um, version of the solution to this problem, uh, except before, before we were using text.before delimiter or text.after delimiter, and here we're using text.split. Now what text.split does is it takes a piece of text and it splits it into a list of elements, 
using the delimiter passed into the second parameter. So in the case of the GFGA column, what text.split will do is it will create a list of two elements where the first element, which has index zero, will be the goals for, and the second element, which has index one, will be the goals against. Uh, and then this function is then converting it into a number with number.from exactly the same way that it did previously. So split as number is a function that creates a function, and the function that it creates is this. So if we call split as number, passing the dash or the hyphen as the parameter, the delim parameter, if we just call it like that, what it will do is it will create this function, except instead of the delim parameter here, it will have the dash. And so this function, we can then call hyphen split. And we can then use the hyphen split function in place of the number dot from text dot before delimiter for the GF column and in place of the number dot from text dot after delimiter in the GD column. All we need to do is pass the GFGA column as the first parameter, which is the text uh, parameter. And we need to pass zero for the goals four. So that's the position in the list that's created by text dot split. And we need to pass one for the goals against, which is the second item. And remember lists in Power Query are zero index. So the first item is zero and the second item is one. So that is a way of using custom functions to simplify the process or the calculation within the adding of the column. And now it may not be super useful when we're just adding a couple and using it a couple of times, but if we had a much more complex process where we needed to do this kind of thing over and over again, then creating functions in this way is a very useful thing to do. So the third method is going to use something called table.transformRows, but in order to understand how that works, uh, I want to talk about merging records. So on the screen, you can see two records, record one and record two with some fields. Record one has first name, last name, and text skills. Uh, record two has instrument and musical ability. And you can see on line six, there's a line that says result equals record one and record two. The ampersand in this case is used to indicate that we want to merge these two records. If the field names, these are the field names, if the field names are different in the two records being merged, then the result is the field, ma field names from record two will be added to the field names from record one to create a new record that contains all of them, which will be called result. And you can see that here, this is record one. You can see my name, first name, last name, and the list of skills. This is record two, where we've got my instruments and my musical ability. And then the result of using the ampersand operator is that we now have my name, the text skills, the instruments, and the musical ability in a record. So that is how the ampersand operator works to combine or merge two records. Okay, so this is the method using transform rows. You can see at the top here, I've got the split as number and hyphen split functions as discussed previously, and they will work in exactly the same way. Um, then I've got a step on row nine, which is using table.transformRows. Now what table.transformRows does is it accepts a table. In this case, I've put source as the table, and then it performs a function on each record in that table and it returns a list of records which you can see over to the side here. So the function um, in this case I am using the underscore to represent the current record in the source table and then using the ampersand operator as discussed, discussed a moment ago to merge with the current record a new record which I'm defining here and this is the new record that contains the three new columns in this case, the points as calculated and, and shown previously, the goals four, exactly the same as previous, and the goal difference, the same as previous. Just a, a couple of things to point out. If the column name in the calculation of a field in this record is from the table that's being transformed, 
then it must be enclosed in square brackets. You can also prefix it with the underscore like this if you want to, but generally you don't need to. So uh, this is from the source table, as is this, as is this. If you see a field name that is not enclosed in square brackets, it means it's a field from the current record. So this is actually referring to this, which is of course this calculation. So this is a new record that is, contains the three new columns that will be merged using the ampersand operator with the current record of the source table. And table.transform rows will then apply that same operation to every record in the source table and return a list of records which have the new columns. And just to show you what that looks like, um, these are the transformed records. And if I click on one of them, you can see this is row one of the resulting table, which contains the original columns, group team one, draw GF minus GA, and the new columns, points GF and GD. And, and it's done that for every single row in the source table. But of course, it's returned a list of records, which is not what we want. So just to get it back, to the right format, we take the results of table.transform rows, which I've called transformed rows, funnily enough, and we put that into table.from records. And so it takes a list of records and converts it back into a table. And I've called that the result. And you can see here that the result is the table with the three new columns. So just to look at that one last time, we pass a table into table.transform rows as the first parameter. The second parameter is a function that is to be applied to each record in that table. I've used the ampersand and a new record to merge new fields with each record. And the fields are calculated in the same ways that the columns were previously. And that is the end of the video.